Live from USC, you're watching Annenberg TV News. COVID-19 can be characterized as a pandemic. Hi, I'm Roa Padmakumar. Tonight we bring you a special edition of ATVN with an inside look at how USC and other schools around the country are responding to the COVID-19 coronavirus. The LA County Department of Public Health says that there are now at least 27 cases in LA County. Unfortunately, uh, we're here today to share, share some very sad news. Uh, we are reporting our first death here in LA County. This was a woman who was over 60. Uh, she, she, she was not a resident uh, here in LA County. She was visiting friends. She had extensive travel over the past month, including a long layover in South Korea. The World Health Organization has declared the coronavirus a pandemic. This happens when a virus spreads over several countries or continents, affecting a large population. In the case of coronavirus, more than 120,000 people are infected across six continents. In the days and weeks ahead, we expect to see the number of cases, the number of deaths, and the number of affected countries climb even higher. COVID-19 can be characterized as a pandemic. This is the first pandemic caused by a coronavirus. Describing the situation as a pandemic does not change WHO's assessment of the threat posed by the virus. Colleges around the nation are moving classes online. Today was the first day for USC students and faculty. Instructors are using a platform called Zoom. We talked to students and professors about the experience. I mean, obviously the, the, the ideal is one-on-one -on -one interaction with students or you know, classroom interactions with students, but we, I just used it in one of my classes and it's not so bad. Funnily, I had a student, in my I have a Tuesday, Thursday class, and in my Tuesday class, they were asking, do I have to be on video? And can I just, you know, just have audio? And I said, we don't have to be on video, but I was thinking like, why do you not want to be on video? Maybe you're embarrassed, but I also like, maybe you just want to be doing other things when we're having class. So I'm definitely going to be calling on students if they're not on video. I'm also pretty excited. I feel like lectures are, can totally be uh, given in over the medium of Zoom. Um, labs and like labs and tests are another story, but for now I'm, I'm excited to see how this works. In order for you to give a speech, you have to be in the environment to give a speech. You have to have an audience and a going virtual, it kind of removes that. The seriousness of your education kind of gets uh, diminished in a way. At this point, USC students are still able to attend lab classes, but production students in the School of Cinematic Arts are concerned. I don't think it's safe to do production at this point. For my project, my lead actress, she's like 80 years old, which is very dangerous under this situation, so I don't feel safe for her to come to the set. It currently makes sense for SCA to continue having the critical classes in person. If they shut down all of the labs and all of campus, you know, for the rest of the semester, then those students who are working on all those thesis projects, just those projects wouldn't happen. They don't get to have that film and they don't get to submit it to festivals or to try to use it as a launch pad. That's a pretty serious, you know, punch in the gut when that's a lot of the reason that you come to the school. More than 50 universities have canceled in-person classes because of the coronavirus. Colleges including Harvard, UPenn, MIT, Cornell, and Pepperdine have told students to pack up as soon as possible and not to come back to campus after spring break. All students that are living on campus are given till 3 p.m. Um, Sunday, March 15th to leave. So it's like international students are allowed to like request to stay on campus for longer. The options were um, two weeks, three weeks, or end of spring semesters. I'm kind of at a state of anxiety right now because I don't know if my request is going to be approved or not. It's still, it's still up in the air whether we'll be allowed to stay on campus. We spoke to a USC psychology professor who explains why our fears spread as fast as the virus itself. This is novel in many ways. It's a disease we don't know, but it's also a disease you can't see. 
I can't tell if you are infected or not. And you can't tell it yourself because it may take two weeks to have any symptoms. But you can still be a vector of infection and infect others. So while you may be fine, you're hugging grandma and it kills her. I think everybody responds on the basis better safe than sorry. I'm Becky Sweeney and I am here at the UCLA campus. Today was the first day that students were taking online classes as a precaution for the COVID-19 outbreak. Now there have been no reported cases on campus, but the school says that it's planning for every possible scenario. The school has suspended in-person classes until April 10th. That means that winter quarter finals and the first two weeks of the spring quarter will be done online. Some students are concerned about adjusting to those online learning environments. I feel like it might affect my learning a lot because I'm a very in-person yeah. learner I and I never miss a class because like that's the only way I can retain the information. So I'm scared about my grades, I'm scared how I'm going to retain the information, but I don't know, I haven't experienced it yet, so hopefully it'll work out. It was a little weird because like no one was there or anything, it was just like you and the professor. Any non-essential gatherings of more than 100 people will be canceled. UCLA Athletics will not allow spectators to attend the games. Chancellor Jean Block told the campus community that it is important for communities to look out for one another and to do what is best for the global and UCLA communities. UCLA Health Center is taking extra precautions by asking anyone who enters the building if they have any symptoms like a cough or fever. Who's got the power? And outside the Ronald Reagan UCLA Medical Center, nurses say they need more equipment, staffing in case of quarantine situations, and training. One pediatric nurse who treated a COVID-19 patient wished she would have had more notice. Um, well, it was just very stressful and anxiety provoking because we weren't, like I said, we weren't trained beforehand. Um, it was in the moment training so that the nurses can provide safe, safe care. Um, we're all members of the community. We all have family members and we don't want to further um, spread the COVID-19. At this time, the Ronald Reagan UCLA Medical Center refuses to comment. They are providing training videos to medical staff as well as training while nurses are treating the patients. For Annenberg Media, I'm Becky Sweeney. USC is taking precautions to limit campus activity. Spring Fest, the School Cinematic Arts' is Talent Week, and TEDxUSC are some of the major events being canceled or postponed. The undergraduate student government says all USC and USG funded events will be canceled or postponed through the end of March. The university has now officially canceled all academic trips during spring break, some of which include Ghana, Washington DC, Armenia, and Mexico. USC campus tours and information sessions are also canceled through March 29th. Another al one alternative is a virtual tour of campus made by the Viterbi School of Engineering. The website features a three-dimensional tour guided by a mini Trojan figure who talks through each location. The list of canceled or postponed events keeps growing. Coachella, the LA Book Festival, South by Southwest, and a major gaming conference, E3. A group of USC students is under quarantine for 14 days after a trip to New Orleans. They all attended NICAR, a major computer-assisted reporting conference. One person at the conference tested presumptively positive for the novel coronavirus. That's out of more than 1,000 who attended. This is Nathan Chun for Annenberg Media, standing outside the entrance of Target at USC Village, where supplies such as hand sanitizer and toilet paper have virtually vanished off the shelves. Now this of course is due to the coronavirus outbreak, which has resulted in online classes today at USC. Target is even limiting hand sanitizers to only six per person. People are stocking up just in case they do get into quarantine. I talked to a student shopping earlier today about what he thinks. I think it's kind of silly. I don't think that's going to do much if you're trying to protect yourself from a virus. I don't think toilet paper is going to act as some kind of armor. Hi, I'm Tyler Meyerly with Annenberg Media here at spring football's first practice of spring camp. So far, the guys have been really amped up under new defensive coordinator Todd Orlando. Uh, there have been no fans here today, so USC Athletics did release a statement yesterday announcing that fans would not be allowed. Media and close family are still allowed at this, these practices until further notice. 
Um, other sports that have banned fans from coming to attendance would be basketball. That's the main focus. The Ivy League has canceled all tournaments completely. The NCAA did make an announcement today announcing that fans would not be allowed at the tournament starting next week, followed by the Big Ten today announcing that fans would not be allowed. We are still waiting for an announcement from the Pac-12, but so far everything's a go for tomorrow's game for USC. As Tyler mentioned, the NCAA announced men's and women's basketball tournaments will be held without fans because of the coronavirus. President Mark Emmert said, quote, this decision is in the best interest of public health, including that of coaches, administrators, fans, and most importantly, our student athletes. Harvey Weinstein was sentenced to 23 years in prison for third degree rape and a criminal sex act. The 67 year old Hollywood producer will be eligible for parole when he's 87. Judge sent a message today uh, that this type of behavior is something that any potential offender is going to have to consider. The judge obviously took it seriously, which is exactly how we think he should have been with rape. That sentence that was just handed down by this court was obscene. That number was obnoxious. Uh, there are murderers who will get out of court faster than Harvey Weinstein will. I think the judge caved, just as I believe the jury caved, and I am not happy. Biden trumped Bernie in last night's Democratic primaries, winning four out of the six states, including Michigan. Just over a week ago, many of the pundits declared that uh, this candidacy was dead. Now we're very much alive. But the Vermont senator says he's staying in the race. While we are currently losing the delegate count, we are strongly winning in two enormously important areas which will determine the future of our country. Exit polls show that a strong majority of the American people support our progressive agenda. Both candidates are scheduled to debate this Sunday in Phoenix, but there will be no cheering or booing. No one will be in the audience because of the coronavirus concerns. Thanks for watching this special edition of ATVN. From everyone here at Annenberg Media, I'm Rohit Padmakumar. For the very latest on the coronavirus, follow us on Annenberg Media and watch us on USCAnnenbergMedia.com. Good night.